Making a Stuart model steam plant, part 51. Finalising the layout of the parts on the baseboard, changing the position of some of the bolt holes on the pair of lamps and painting them with etch primer. This clip shows the baseboard upside down on the workbench. You will notice that I've painted it black. Why would I bother painting the underside of the baseboard black? Well, it's quite simple. Model steam plants throw out quite a lot of water and oil. And some steam plants or steam engines on plinths have what's called green bays underneath. That's the green stuff that's normally used on snooker and pool tables. That's a good idea for an engine or a steam plant that's just going to be a decorative ornament. But this is a working steam plant. I want to make sure that if any water finds its way to the underside of the baseboard, it doesn't soak into the wood, hence the paint. When I turn over the baseboard, you can see all the mahogany planking on the top surface. Before finishing the baseboard and before fitting the edging, I need to drill quite a few holes in this board to mount the components. A word of caution, if you're doing this, do not use a pen. Always use a pencil to mark the top surface of the planks. If you use a pen, then the ink could spread and become visible on the finished plant. So once again, always use a pencil for marking out the positions for the components. Once all of the holes have been drilled through the board to mount the components, I will be rubbing down and varnishing the top surface. Any pencil lines will disappear completely. In this clip, I'm double checking the measurements. As the saying goes, measure twice and then you will cut once. Well, I'm not going to be doing much cutting, but I don't want to drill any holes in the wrong place. The Stuart 1010V is going to sit where you see it. It's currently on a piece of wood, it won't be as high as this. I fitted the engine temporarily to this softwood mount whilst I was working on it, because the design of a 1010V means that the flywheel hangs just below the box bed, which is a bit bizarre, but that's the way it is. This is the water tank, and just behind it is the hand pump, and that's the position it's going to be in. The hand pump's outlet will go all the way underneath the boiler to the exhaust condenser tank. Because I fitted a coil inside the condenser, and the water will circulate around inside the condenser, where it will be preheated before being fed into the boiler via the check valve on the right hand side at the bottom of the boiler as you can see in this clip. At the time of filming I hadn't fitted the check valve. Here's one of the lamp standards that are going to be fitted to the plant. There are a pair of these. I think I have the position about right for these. One at each side, just in front of the water tank at this side and the condenser at the other side. Everything that you see on this baseboard is where it's going to go. Well, this is the plan so far. The only thing I'm thinking about is the position of the S50. This is a steam engine that's going to drive the generator, which in turn will supply electricity to the two lamps. I have a problem though. If I put the engine the other way around, with it at the right hand side, that is better for the position of the steam inlet to the steam chest relative to the steam taps on the boiler. The only problem is though, if the generator is at the other side, then the electrical terminals will face the front and that will not look very good. I really am thinking that I'm going to fit the engine this way around, because at least the exhaust from the engine will be closer to the condenser. The generator isn't going to be driven by an elastic band, I'm just using it for the effect of what it's going to look like with the leather belt on it. So there you have it. This I think is going to be the final layout and it's the best possible layout in my opinion for this model steam plant. What I'm doing once again is measuring twice to position the parts in the correct place and mark round them with the pencil. Both of the lamps need to be in exactly the same position relative to each other. I'm a bit puzzled why the positions of the holes in the bases of these lamps are in such strange positions relative to each other. Have a close look at the positions of the electrical connectors at the bottom right and top right. In this shot, the weird position of the holes is really jumping out at me. Also, I'm going to remove the electrical connectors. All of the wiring will be hidden underneath the baseboard. What I propose to do is remove the electrical connectors, take a good long look at the positions of the holes, 
Then I will change the position of the holes before drilling them a slightly larger size and hopefully they should be just about in the right position then. The job starts by disconnecting all of the electrical connectors. There's only four of them so it's no big deal and quite easy to do. One of the holes is slightly larger and that's to hold the insulation from one of the electrical connectors on each of the lamps. Here I'm removing them completely and being very careful not to damage the original wiring inside the light. And in no time at all, thanks to the speed of the video, the electrical fittings have now been removed. By the look of it, I think these used to be painted yellow. The red was bad enough, but the yellow would have been really horrendous. I'm going to paint these, guess what colour, green. They look a bit like street lamps, and the finish on them isn't particularly good, but it looks like a cast iron street lamp, which is fine. Time to correct the positions of the mounting holes. First of all, I used a needle file. This was taking ages, so I decided to automate the process. This is my Proxon motor tool, fitted with a small milling cutter, and this is far quicker than a needle file. Once I persuaded the holes to be in the right place, I drilled them out with a 5 seconds of an inch drill bit. In the clip, the drill bit looks very close to my finger, but it's not, it's just the camera angle. Here you see the finished modification, with four 4BA bolts in position. I took both of the lamps into the outer part of the workshop where it was very cold, and I sprayed them with some etch primer, then I brought them back into the inner part of the workshop, which is a good bit warmer, and here they are, with the normal gratuitous shot of the paint drying. When I was painting these, I was slightly concerned that the solvent in the etch primer may have lifted the old paint, but it didn't, so that's a good thing. Here are some shots of the plant showing the layout. Don't forget the Stuart Double Ten won't be as high as it is. It's on a piece of soft wood on top of the main mounting. And I'm going to build a brick plinth around the main mounting. The Stuart S50 looks fine just the way it is. And here's the position of it relative to the generator. And both of the engine crankshafts will be in line with each other. With the camera held in this position, it distorts the perspective slightly but once again you can see all of the parts on the baseboard. This is, as far as I'm concerned, the finished layout, and I'm quite looking forward to seeing this job completed, because it's taken a lot longer than I ever thought it was going to do. But never mind, it's all good fun, and I really like doing this sort of thing. That's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.